Look, Mum, no hands. Former Australian Air Force pilot Michael Reid, the first person to fly the Martin jetpack outside beyond just a takeoff and landing. Obviously, the sensation of flying a jetpack is something that very few people uh, on Earth have been lucky enough to experience. And uh, the best I could say is that it's a very pleasurable experience. This is the first time anyone's seen the Martin jetpack make a proper manned flight, tearing across a North Canterbury irrigation pond with proud staff members watching on. We don't actually have the parachute fitted to this one, so we restrict ourselves to two metres over land and eight metres over water um, in case of the worst case scenario. The manned flight concludes a year of highs and lows for Martin jetpack, with a Chinese aerospace company taking a major stake when it listed on the Australian Stock Exchange in February. Then in June, founder Glenn Martin resigned from the business. Even though today was the test flight, Martin says it will have an updated version of the jetpack built by the middle of next year and it will be ready for commercial sale by the end of 2016. The Dubai Civil Defence and Fire Service this month joining a growing list of willing buyers. They look to it as crowd control as well as uh, looking at uh, natural disaster recovery, uh, perhaps when there's a problem with the, um, you know, a building, a building collapse or something along those lines. Martin Jetpack says the commercial version will be able to reach a height of 1,000 metres with a max speed of over 70 kilometres an hour. I don't see it as unrealistic that in 10 years these could be quite commonplace. Of course it will look different, no different to the way the Model T Ford looked very different to the production cars of the 50s and 60s. Although parking a car successfully doesn't bring quite so much relief for the driver's family. Michael Parkin, One News.